This is going to be a study on the subject of devils and devil possession. The Bible has a lot to say about devils and gives signs and traits of somebody who's possibly devil possessed. Just because you may have some of these traits doesn't mean you are possessed. I mean, it could mean that. It's up to you to decide by looking at these scriptures and reading the Bible yourself and talking to God and maybe God will let you know that you're possessed of devils. Now, if you're not saved, then the thing you need to do is get saved by believing the gospel. You're not going to get devils out any other way but by doing that. But if you look at Matthew chapter 8 and verse 28... It says that when he was come to the other side of the country, this is talking about Jesus, and to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So first you see that devils and devil possessed men are stronger than regular men. Because it says, so that no man might pass by that way. I mean, that would include really strong men, men that are carrying a weapon. Uh, they couldn't pass by that way because these devils were exceeding fierce. But you'll also notice in Acts chapter 19. If you go to Acts chapter 19, verse 15 and 16. It says, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And that's probably what happened to any of the men that tried to pass by that way in Matthew chapter 8. But also notice that Jesus is going to pass by that way. And Jesus isn't just like any other man. He is the Son of God. He's a lot more stronger than every man. And more powerful than devils and any devil possessed men. Notice that Jesus Christ isn't a weak, effeminate sissy like Hollywood portrays him. The Jesus Christ of Hollywood is devil possessed. If that Jesus was real, that's another Jesus. The Jesus of Hollywood isn't the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. And if you believe in that Jesus, you're believing in the wrong one. The real Jesus Christ was tough. And he wasn't going to be bullied by devil-possessed men or anyone else. But it says in verse 29, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? So, this shows devils believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this shows that devils are fundamentalists. They believe in the fundamentals of the faith. They believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And if you call Jesus Christ the Son of God, you're making him equal with God. But I forgot to mention something in verse 28. It says they were exceeding fierce. And the end time signs in 2 Timothy chapter 3 says this, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And I believe this is talking about the last days of the church age. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, fierce, men being fierce is one of the last day signs and I believe people are devil possessed today, you can tell by the way they act, I mean they hate God, they hate the Bible, they have no use for God and they have no use for the Bible and You'll notice too that in Daniel 8.23, when talking about the Antichrist, it calls him a king of fierce countenance. 
So these devils are exceeding fierce. And no doubt about it, the Antichrist is going to be devil-possessed. But it says in verse 29, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Showing that these devils are fundamentalists. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? This also shows that the devils know that they have but a short time. The devils know that they're going to a lake of fire. And it makes you wonder, are they dreading this? Are they dreading this day going to the lake of fire? And does this give them more fuel to keep going and torment others and get as many people away from God as possible? Just like the devil is doing. And then verse 30 it says, And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And if you have studied Second Peter, it compares pigs to false prophets, female false prophets. Someone like Joyce Meyer or Paula White. Uh, pigs are unclean animals and unclean spirits love unclean animals. And it says in verse 31, So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. So you can see that the devils caused these pigs to commit suicide. And that's, I know this is animals, but that's a sign of devil possession. That is suicide. And if you look at Matthew 17, 15. Matthew 17 and verse 15. It says, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So these, the, this devil possessed boy was falling into the fire and into the water. Trying to commit suicide. Suicide is a sign of devil possession. And shows like 13 Reasons Why or any other movie that talks about and the main subject is suicide I would stay away from it any type of self-harm is a sign of devil possession and then verse 33 says and they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils and behold the whole city came out to meet Jesus and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. So you see, even though Jesus Christ got rid of the devils, got the devils out of these men, made that place a better place to live, they still wanted rid of him because of their animals that got killed in the waters. That shows you that men have no need for Jesus Christ no matter what he does for them. But now let's look at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 and verse 2. And this is the same story, but it's told from a different perspective. The other story was told by Matthew. This one's told by Mark. It says, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So you see that just like in the previous story, which was the same story, the devils went off into the water. They have some type of obsession with water. And you can see here that as soon as Jesus came out of the ship, they met him. So that shows that they were dwelling next to the water. They love wet places. And the next verse says, in verse 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs. 
yet is dwelling among the tombs because devil possessed people love death. They love shows like The Walking Dead. They love death metal. They say, I wish I was dead a lot. Are you a person that goes around wishing you were dead because you're so depressed? That's a good sign of devil possession. Verse 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. So you see that he has supernatural strength. A good sign someone is devil possessed is they have supernatural strength, and not the kind of strength that comes from a lot of working out and things like that. I'm talking about someone who you wouldn't expect to have supernatural strength. And it says, No man could bind him, no, not with chains. And you see the devil likes to take uh, phrases and stories from the Bible. And this being something negative, he makes that into something cool and acceptable. I remember a long time ago a popular saying was off the chain and when somebody would find something they liked they would say that's off the chain but you see in this story the devils are off the chain and people would also do this with stuff like when they see something they like they say that's bad or that's wicked and they take bad things and apply that to good things they call evil good and good evil and verse 4 says because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him see the supernatural strength and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him so you see devils and devil possessed men are very unruly they have an unruly nature they're rebels do you have rebellion in your heart do you keep wanting to go against your parents? Do you keep wanting to act up at school? Can you not hold down a job because you don't want to listen to a boss or have any type of authority? Can you not show up for work? Do you act like an idiot at work and won't work and are lazy? Are you out of control? That's a good sign. You're possessed with devils or in, under the influence of a devil. And verse 5 says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains. Seems like an always night and day shows that he's not getting much sleep. Or he's staying up all night and sleeping in the day. That's a good sign of devil position. You ever seen people that want to stay up all night doing stuff they're not supposed to do? And then they sleep all day. They have no interaction with others because... They're very antisocial and depressed. But he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. There's a really good sign of devil possession. Have you ever heard about these people that cut their self and self-mutilate themselves? That's a really good sign you're devil possessed, is if you're cutting yourself. And if you look at 1 Kings 18.28, you'll see where these bell worshippers cut themselves. So these devil worshippers were cutting themselves. So when you do that, it's a good, good sign you're devil possessed and you're acting like a devil worshipper. And really you're, you're so full of yourself and caring so much about you yourself because that's all you're thinking about when you do that. And that's a sad thing. I don't think we should make fun of that or make light of it. But you can have victory over that by... I mean, if you're a safe person doing that, then you should come to Jesus Christ, tell Him you're sorry and that you want to get back to living right and reading the Bible and praying. I mean, if, and if you're lost and you're doing that, then you can be saved. You can believe the gospel, the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, where it says, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. To, to be saved, you believe that gospel. 
The gospel is this, Jesus Christ died. How did he die? He shed his blood. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you want to be saved, put your trust in that. If you want to stay living in the shape you're living, doing all the bad things you're doing and have no way of getting victory over that stuff. If you want to die and go to hell, then reject that gospel. If you want to go to heaven, accept that gospel. But the devil-possessed man was crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. So you see that devils are very religious people. Just like the Pope is very religious. Just like a Church of Christ pastor is very religious. Just like Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses are very religious. Kanye West is very religious. He claims to worship Jesus. But yet he hates Jesus and calls himself God. There's something weird about how a lot of people who are devil possessed have a satanic obsession with Jesus Christ. They can't keep his name out of their mouth. The stupid guy who created the Family Guy show has to have Jesus and all his episodes of Family Guy mocking and blaspheming Jesus. That's a really good sign you're devil possessed. And it's a really good sign you're devil possessed if you think that's funny. If you think it's funny that Seth McFlaren, or whatever his name is, blaspheming and mocking Jesus on his TV show, then you probably have some devils. And it says, And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? So once again, you see, devils are fundamentalists. They believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, making him equal with God when they call him that. And you see that they know that Jesus is the Most High, Most High God. They don't believe that there's any gods above him. Just like the devil said, I will be like the Most High in Isaiah 14, 14. They know that none of these false gods can compare with the Most High God. And it says, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So the devils know they're going to be in torments. They know they're going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth in a lake of fire for all eternity. And it says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And this shows that a person can have more than one devil in them at once. Possibly thousands. And if you keep reading, it says, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. There's another common saying. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. So you see, if, if, these were, if it was two men which Matthew said it was two men, but Mark is just giving his perspective of one man, uh, then they must have had a thousand apiece or something like that because it says there were about two thousand. So you, a person can fit a thousand demons in them at one time, or devils as the Bible calls it. And that's because devils aren't like angels. Devils aren't angels. Uh, angels aren't cherubim, cherubim aren't seraphim, and angels aren't none. There's are different classes of, of beings. And when you make devils, the fallen angels, you really mess up the Bible when it comes to the spirit world. Uh, devils have wings, angels don't have wings. There's female devils, there's no female angels. The book of Zechariah talks about f there's female devils. 
and devils can be small and, and it talks about them being like flies. Uh, the Gospels call the devil Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. So you see, devils can be small and you can fit a whole lot of them in a person, one person. And verse 14 says, And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus. Then they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And had the legion sitting and clothed. So when this guy got the devils out of him, he put some clothes on. Nowadays, everybody's wanting to take their clothes off. They're wanting to go to nude beaches. And I guarantee you that people on nude beaches are devil-possessed because, like I said, these, these devil-possessed men were dwelling next to the water. And they obviously didn't have clothes on. <laughs> but it says he was clothed and in his right mind. Pretty much saying, if you're one of these people that go around naked, you're not in your right mind. And it's a good chance you're devil-possessed. And that doesn't mean completely nude. I mean, you can be going around basically naked. Like when you go to the mall, you pretty much see a bunch of half-naked people. And it says, they saw him clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So they were so used to seeing this guy devil-possessed that they were afraid when they saw him not devil-possessed. And they, they saw it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil... And also concerning the swine, and they began to pray him to, to depart out of their coasts. Just like people today in America, they have no use for Jesus. They want rid of him. And uh, just like people in the tribulation, uh, when Moses and Elijah get beheaded by the Antichrist, people are going to be happy. They're going to make merry and send gifts. And a good sign that you're devil-possessed is you want rid of Jesus. And I believe these men that wanted rid of Jesus were devil-possessed themselves. They may have just been, you know, the type that were like the kind we have in America. I heard one preacher say, uh, devil-possessed people in America aren't like these maniacs described here. They are actually act su supposedly classy, and they get to be on the front of magazines but I believe these men that wanted rid of Jesus were devil possessed himself but um maybe you're saved and you think you're devil possessed and that's a possibility because in 1st Corinthians chapter 5 it talks about a saved man who is being turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh and if that's not being devil possessed, I don't know what is. How can you say that he's not possessed by the devil when he's being turned over to Satan? Wouldn't he be in Satan's possession? No, I'm not saying a devil or the devil can get your soul. They can't get your soul, but they can get everything else. They can get your arms, your legs, your, your head. They can get your house. They can get your family. Uh, if you keep going down the road you're going of sin and doing what you want to do, then you can be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Uh, that's another reason why a Christian shouldn't just live however he wants to live. No, you can't lose your salvation, but you can lose everything else. So if you're saved and you're devil-possessed, the first thing you need to do is come to Jesus, say, I'm sorry for my sins, I'm confessing my sins, Start reading your Bible daily, listen to good preaching, and you can get rid of these devils that are destroying your life. And if you're not saved, then you need to be saved. You don't need to be worrying about getting rid of the devils if you're not even saved. And I'm going to tell you how to be saved now. Uh, if you have a Bible, if you have a King James Bible, come to 1 Corinthians 15. Now, if you don't have a Bible, you can just listen to me read it. But in 1 Corinthians 15 is where you find the gospel. 
Most people don't know anything about the gospel, and most Christians couldn't even tell you where the gospel was in the Bible. But if you look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Notice it says, which also have ye have received. You receive it. You put your trust in it, by which also ye are saved. As it says in verse 2, If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the gospel is this. Jesus Christ died. How did he die? He shed his blood. He couldn't die no other way. He couldn't have been drowned. He couldn't have been uh, hanged. He had to have shed his blood. Because... We can't get forgiveness of sins other than by a blood atonement. So Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood. He died for your sins. That's the key. He died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you got that? Now turn to Colossians. The book of Colossians chapter 1. And look at verse 14. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. If you want forgiveness of sins, then you need to put your faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you why you need a Savior. Even though I believe you already know why, you, I believe you already know why you need a Savior. But I'm going to show you just in case. If you look at Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you're a sinner, and that's why you need a Savior. Uh, God isn't going to allow sin into heaven. The only way you're going to get to heaven is by getting the righteousness of someone who hasn't sinned. Jesus Christ is the only man that was sinless. And when you put your trust in him, God gives you the righteousness of Jesus Christ and takes away your unrighteousness. That's called imputed righteousness. And uh, verse 24 in the same chapter says, "...being justified freely by his grace." Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So you're justified freely. Justified means declared righteous. When you believe the gospel, God freely declares you righteous. That means you don't do any good works. If you look at the very next chapter, it may be on the same page. Uh, chapter 4 and verse 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Your faith is counted for righteousness. If you're putting your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection to save you, then that gives you righteousness, not your good things that you're doing, which would be your good works. Now turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you see, it's not of works. You can't boast about your salvation if you get saved because it's not of yourself. And even the faith that you had, you got from God. And you say, what if I don't have enough faith? You do have enough. If you have enough faith... To believe the gospel then that is enough faith and that faith you got from God God gives every man enough faith to believe the gospel if he will believe the gospel 
And Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're saved by believing. You're not saved by not sinning. You're not saved by uh, living a good life after you're saved. You don't keep yourself sa saved. God keeps you saved. You're eternally secure once you get in Jesus Christ. But I hope this has helped you and I hope that you're, you'll get saved if you're not saved. I hope that if you are saved then you'll uh, stay living a good life if you are. And if you're not then now's a good time to start. And you can start by confessing your sins and start by reading your Bible daily, listening to preaching and studying your Bible. But this has been a study on how to know if you're devil-possessed.